When I first started in Blender and started making stuff on my own without the aid of a tutorial, the first thing I set out to do was a spaceship. After hours of work, I ended up something that looked like this. So yeah, whatever my approach could be considered, this wasn't going to work. However, turning back to the tutorials didn't really help out much either. Even now, six years later, I find that the tutorials available often don't truly show a comprehensive way of creating a spaceship that both looks good close up and feels like a real spaceship, especially like the ones from Star Wars or Halo. Surely somebody would want to make a tutorial showing how you can create something like that. I mean, I feel like if you're a computer nerd like me, spaceships are on your mind far too often as it is, so I can only imagine that somebody else would have done it first. In creating this tutorial, however, I found out that it's a bit more complicated than just making a spaceship. This requires a lot of experience in 3D in general, and a good understanding of hard surface modeling, texturing, and design. But fear not, in this tutorial I will walk you through my process of creating a spaceship in Blender. To start creating the spaceship, I began blocking out basic shapes. Using primitive objects, you know, cubes, spheres, and cylinders, I kept the form simple and focused and based on the silhouette. When you're at this stage, don't even begin thinking about the final details. You want to create the feel of the ship. Make sure its weight feels right, the angles flow well, and that it has a believable form. While reference will help with the finer details, this is where you're going to be relying heavily on real world and other artistic concepts to create a believable shape that feels strong. Make sure not to over detail this, adding too much detail is going to make it too difficult to change and will also throw off the style that you're going to choose later. I played around with the form until I was happy with the overall shape and I moved on to modeling the high poly model. This is where you really decide the style of your spaceship. While the blocking leads the style in a loose direction, the high poly modeling is where you determine if your spaceship is angular and sharp, smooth and curvy, or big and bulky. Take your time on this, and think about how the shapes of your ship can be broken down into smaller pieces, not just what you can add on to the shape. During this stage, I used a lot of modifiers. Modifiers allow you to quickly change, or modify, your shape in a non-destructive way. For example, if I manually subdivide a shape, I have to deal with all of those polygons, and will have to manually add or remove detail later. However, if I use a subdivision modifier, I can still edit the shapes as if it's low poly, and use other tools to shape the details in the way that I want to. Some of the other modifiers I used on this piece included the Array modifier, Solidify modifier, and the Mirror modifier. Also, stacking the modifiers will give you great results. Play around and figure out these tools, and they will save you a ton of time and give you more control than you could even imagine. Next, I wanted to talk about Booleans. While these are modifiers as well, I feel this tool needs to be emphasized. Booleans allow you to subtract, combine, or intersect two objects. The tool is extremely useful for making more exotic and complex shapes that would take too long to create through traditional modeling techniques. On the spaceship, I mainly used bullions to put holes and plate lines in the ship, and to help aid in the feeling that it's made of many separate pieces. For creating the spaceship, I used the blocking to form my primary shapes, moving on to defining the secondary details, and finally went on to add the small details to the shape, also called the tertiary shapes, or even greebles. Greebles are small shapes that you can place on your object to add all of the micro details. You don't need many of these, as duplicating them across the shape multiple times will actually aid in the style of what you're creating. For the spaceship, I modeled small bump details and vents, placing them on the surface of the object using the snap tool. Sometimes this tool can be a little buggy, so switch your orientation to local and move the objects manually to properly merge the shape. After a few more details, I was happy with the results. But wait, before you can move on to texturing, you're going to have to do something really annoying, but definitely worth it. Retopology. While creating the ship, I didn't focus on the topology first and foremost, as this would only take longer and may compromise me going for more complex and interesting shapes. However, not worrying about this resulted in the spaceship being too difficult to UV unwrap and texture, meaning I would have to do retopology. Now, some people might look at that and think recreating the entire model from scratch just after you went through all that work is going to be really annoying, but don't worry, there's actually a simple way to do this. I began creating a new mesh for my object. First, I applied all the modifiers on the shape using simple quad planes, the snap tool, and a shrink wrap modifier. I was able to wrap the entire object in a new mesh. I created a new layer and moved the shapes I finished over to it. Some shapes didn't need to be retopologized, like simple cubes and cylinders, or shapes that already had a quad mesh. Sometimes when I was retopologizing the shape, I found instead of using the snap and shrink wrap method, I could simply apply the modifiers and fix the mesh manually using the slide and merge tools. 
After retopology, I was finally ready to texture. But this is where I came across some problems. Little did I know, when you're creating a high poly model, you're actually going to want to overdo the quality. I guess that's where the name comes from. Modern computers don't have nearly as much trouble with high poly models, and I mess this up by not subdividing nearly enough. When in doubt, raise the polygonal depth. By not doing this, I ended up with the inability to add edgeware or even texture in softwares like Quixel Mixer and Substance Painter effectively. While I ended up being able to texture using painting and some node editing, this ultimately compromised the finished result. If I had made a higher poly model with more details, I could have baked normals, AO, and other maps to put out a result with a higher fidelity. So next time I do this approach, I'm going to create a higher poly version with far more of the final details, and then bake that down to a lower poly model. I hope you can learn from my mistakes because boy did they cost me a few hours and I got pretty frustrated. I knew I had to take a step back and reevaluate what I was doing. First off, I used a quick and cheap way to create a UV map. While Smart UV Project can be an amazing tool that gets the job done, in this case it wasn't going to cut it. I had to create the UV map manually. I separated all the loose parts of the model and began marking the seams all across the shapes. If you're worried about how to approach UV unwrapping, just think about it like origami. Where could I hide seams? And how would this unwrap them to a flat surface? It's okay to add a few seams, UV unwrap, and then add more as you're going along. Another piece of advice I can offer is to follow along edge lines. If you can avoid putting seams along flat surfaces, you're going to end up with a cleaner result. When I finished UV unwrapping, I recombined the shapes and made one whole UV map. So now I had a proper UV map and was ready to texture entirely inside of Blender. Yeah, I wasn't excited about that. For this I created three materials, a tan painted metal, a more chromey metal, and a dark black metal. Using the L key you can select whole joined pieces rather than selecting each individual face. I assigned each selection different materials and then moved over to texture painting. For this I basically just made a mask to add grunge and some ambient inclusion to the tan painted metal. I wanted to go further with this and I tried to automate the process but procedural texturing was not working for me. At the end of it all some simple materials and texture painting are what I relied on to create the textures for the spaceship. By the end of this long process, I felt like I learned a lot, but there's more to do in the future. I'm definitely going to be revisiting this soon, and I'm going to try to get a far more realistic result with a much higher attention to detail. But as they say, art is never finished, it is merely abandoned. So, thanks for watching, and let me know what you'd like to see me create next time.